This video addresses advanced topics about developing concurrent software. If you're not already familiar with techniques for controlling concurrent software execution, you may find the discussion in this video a bit advanced. I occasionally see discussions about the value of lockless concurrency algorithms, but these algorithms aren't what they seem to be. Let's take a simple example of classic concurrency control. These examples use the Go language, but the concepts I'll be discussing are common to almost all languages. The mutex ensures that only a single CPU core can access the value at a time. Note also that I'm avoiding using some optimizations only available in the Go language, such as defer, to make the code's intent as clear as possible. This second example uses a lockless algorithm. Note the use of atomic add int 32, which ensures that only one CPU can do math on that value at a time. On the surface, we seem to have achieved magic. However, when we look at the assembly code generated, we see an explicit lock statement. The truth is that the term lockless algorithm is misleading. A better term would be lock optimized algorithm, but I guess that doesn't sound as spiffy. Every example of a so-called lockless algorithm that I've been able to find is simply doing aggressive lock optimization, which makes sense as safely sharing a resource is impossible without some sort of lock. The lock statement in the assembly uses a hardware lock to protect the memory location. This is the most performant lock available as it's a single instruction entirely implemented in microcode, but it's still a lock. No matter how fast it's able to execute, we are still limited to a single CPU performing the operation at a time. This third example shows a simplified example of a common lockless algorithm. The compare and swap instruction uses a hardware lock to ensure that only one CPU is executing the instruction at a time and sets the value to locked only if it's currently unlocked. The function retries the operation until it succeeds in setting the lock. So what makes this better than a mutex? Looking at the Go implementation of mutex, we see that it uses the same compare and swap instruction behind the scenes, but instead of retrying indefinitely, it falls into a slow path if the mutex can't be immediately acquired. More on this later, but in the case of an uncontested mutex, the performance of the lockless algorithm is identical to the use of a mutex. If lockless algorithms are really just lock optimized algorithms, then what's actually happening? This next example is grossly oversimplified, but hopefully still instructive. Here we're generating a string message with the value in it. The astute among you will realize that the sprintf function can be a time consuming operation. As a result, simply moving the sprintf outside the section protected by the mutex will improve concurrency by minimizing the amount of time the mutex is held. Congratulations. You've just implemented a lockless algorithm. All joking aside, this is what's actually happening with lockless algorithms. Of course, when implementing a lockless algorithm for something as complicated as a concurrent map, the actual details get more complicated. If we know that hardware locking is very fast, then why do we need software mutexes? The use case where the mutex is contested demonstrates the problem. Imagine a machine with four CPUs, where one CPU holds the mutex and the others are waiting for it. In this case, all four CPUs are maxed out since the waiting loop uses 100% CPU until it acquires the lock. If another process wants to use a CPU independently of the mutex, the operating system now has to preempt something. This also means that a process doing meaningful work may be preempted by a process that needs 100% of a CPU core to wait for a lock to be available. This problem scales to larger machines. No matter how many CPUs are available, if the number of processes that want a CPU exceeds the available CPUs, then the processes waiting for locks are preventing meaningful computation from happening. Another issue is fairness. Since the lockless algorithm has all processes grabbing at the lock with equal aggressiveness, which process acquires the lock next is essentially random. It wouldn't be unusual for some processes to wait excessively for the lock, and it's theoretically possible that some process will never acquire the lock as long as it's contested. And this is what all the complexity in Go's lock slow algorithm address. Of course, any mature mutex implementation is going to have equivalent code because it needs to do two things. First, it ensures that waiting processes yield the CPU to other processes while they wait. And second, it ensures that when the mutex is highly contested, acquisition is done fairly in the same order as requested. In conclusion, the term lockless algorithm is misleading. Feel free to claim that you implemented a lockless algorithm anytime you optimize locking code. 
For most use cases, it's best to use whatever Mutex implementation is available in your language and optimize the code to spend as little time with the Mutex locked as possible. The use of lower level locking, such as compare and swap, is fraught with peril, as it doesn't always result in performance improvements. It should be undertaken only after careful consideration and with extensive testing to ensure it's actually an improvement.